So I'm now talking with Ted Simarata. Okay. And your organization, sir? I'm uh, with the Center for Integrative Healthcare. Okay, great. Well, it's great to talk to you this evening. And uh, is this something that you might want to reflect upon? Um, President Obama's comments today, um, and maybe how this plays a role in meeting our energy needs. I think some of the real beauty and the passion of President Obama's address today uh, was most stated in his calling on Americans to participate, to be responsible, and to collectively uh, attain the kind of vision that I think he is leading the way with, but really he is something of just the flashpoint for what has been a gathering of consciousness in this country and in the world. And so when he calls on the rest of us to join, he's reminding us that it isn't something that he's going to do alone or that the government's going to do, but that we all have to participate in. So when it comes to the issue of, of renewable energy, to me, I, I, I like to get a little poetic with it even and, and think, well, renewable energy is the energy that we're all feeling today. And it, it's a great feeling. You know, it's been a wonderful day. And it's been, it's been a wonderful time over the last two years preparing you know, and, and working for his election and the manifestation of, I think, the hopes and dreams of a lot of people. What I think we... What this means for, for energy and renewable energy is that while we renew Americans' energy, our spirit, we have, we have certain missions. And, and I think that really to see energy as in um, solar and wind and, and other renewables as the issue alone, and, and I'm sure most do not see it alone, but that would be the big mistake. But our energy needs to always be seen as something that's driven by a purpose and the purpose can't just be more business as it's been in the past or more profit but we have a country that still has much more poverty than we should even you know be willing to acknowledge in a country of such wealth and privilege uh, in a nation where we have just suffered the disaster of Katrina and we have a city that's been devastated my hope is that, that uh, the administration will use New Orleans as a model city, as many have talked about, to demonstrate what can be done in terms of building a city that is energy efficient, that draws upon the best and the brightest in design, engineering, and any other scientific and, and human resources that we have, to make it a model for what this country can be. Because really the disaster of Katrina has been something of a model of what this country has been in part. And Katrina and well, I should say New Orleans was the kind of the poor stepchild that was hidden in the closet. People would visit that city in order to have a good time, to party on Bourbon Street. But what was revealed with the storm and the disaster is that there is a, a vibrant human fabric to that city that was just torn apart and, and devastated by a storm. But the storm didn't do the devastation. It revealed the devastation that poverty had been doing for generations there and that neglect had been doing. And unfortunately, our, our, our former president uh, exemplified the neglect by this is his slow response to this disaster. So what we can do, I think, is remember that in pursuing our energy goals, in discussing renewable energy, it's not so that we can just, as I said, propel business to greater profits. It's not so that we can feel good about ourselves because we're driving around with a small carbon footprint, but it's so that we can lift the people who have not been privileged in this country to a place